Is Emmanuel Macron's proposal for Ukraine gaining traction? In late February 2024, French President Emmanuel Macron broached the previous taboo subject of deploying NATO troops to Ukraine this year. He is not necessarily advocating for immediate deployment, but that NATO and European leaders need to at least be open to the idea as the war is in its third year. Many Western leaders rejected the idea, including the United States, the United Kingdom, Germany, and Russia's Vladimir Putin responded that such a deployment could lead to a nuclear war. Macron responded to Putin by stating that NATO also has nuclear weapons and are ready to use them. These exchanges between the leaders demonstrates that France is pressing for a hard line against Russia, and it could introduce strategic ambiguity by removing NATO's previous public red lines, but at the risk that this new Western policy could expand the war in Ukraine. NATO leaders have made it clear made a clear position since the beginning of the war that no NATO troops will be deployed to Ukraine. This is one red line position that has not been crossed, but NATO leaders have also stated in the past that no modern Western battle tanks would be sent to Ukraine, no long-range weapons with the capability of striking Russia would be sent to Ukraine, no cluster munitions would be sent to Ukraine, and no modern Western fighter aircraft would be sent to Ukraine. All these red lines have been crossed as the war continues in Ukraine. Experience shows that NATO red lines are malleable, so it appears no troops in Ukraine is something that NATO would be willing to negotiate as the war continues and Ukraine runs short of manpower when compared to Russia. Of course, sending NATO troops to Ukraine and risk losing lives is much different than a British-made Challenger II main battle tank with a Ukrainian crew getting destroyed in front of a Russian minefield compared to a British air defense crew being killed in a Russian airstrike outside of Kyiv. The point is that West losing its soldiers in Ukraine is much different to, to the Western public than expanded or destroyed Western weapons manned by Ukrainians. So it is a significantly bigger red line for the West, but it is a red line and nearly all prior Western red lines have been crossed. Motivating factors of this discussion is that Western sanctions or introduction of more modern lethal weapons have de- demonstrated no appreciable impact to deter Russian resolve. And, at this time, Western aid is slowing. Perhaps Russia has put, put in their strategic calculations that the West and NATO will only go so far to assist Ukraine. The Russians can make this calculation when it looks at the Western reluctance to risk escalation, atrophy in armed forces due to decades of military and defense industry neglect, reducing European capabilities, or the assumption that Europe and NATO will be too politically divided to forcibly meet the Russian threat. For example, NATO and the EU both require unanimous support of all member nations to make any significant policy decisions. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg also stated that Ukraine will not become a member of NATO until the war is over. If Russia's reasons to go to war is to prevent Ukraine's economic defensive alignment with the West, then Stoltenberg's comment only incentivizes Russia to keep the war going if its goal is to prevent Ukraine joining NATO or the EU. The public declaration from President Macron can serve one of two purposes. It introduces strategic ambiguity to the war in Ukraine that is currently is in a condition that Russia currently does not have to consider. Putin would be forced to consider if any attempts to widen the war or launch a new ground offensive could trigger NATO countries to send more weapons but also deploy soldiers. The other potential is that Macron is pressing Europe, and to a lesser extent non-NATO Europe, to take a hard line against Russia and be willing to take actions that increase the likelihood of a wider war, but may also force a drawdown of the tempo of Russian operations inside Ukraine, so not to create a crisis that would justify NATO troops entering Ukraine. When Macron made his proposal, it shocked many European NATO ministers with his statement. Macron, instead of backpedaling from the statement, has doubled down on it and met, met the Putin nuclear threat with his own statement that NATO is ready for a nuclear war. Despite the vocal disagreements from various powerful NATO countries, Macron has found some allies for his proposal.
Poland and Finland both said that it is not not the time to introduce ground troops to Ukraine, but that the proposal needs to be on the table as an option. Recently, retired U.S. Army Colonel Alexander Crowther, a former assistant to the Supreme Allied Commander in Europe, in an interview with Radio Free Europe, argued a case that when NATO troops could enter Ukraine, and in what capacity. Just like the debate over sending Western tanks and fighters to Ukraine, what was once reject- a rejected option is now open debate over the merit and the risk of the French proposal. The role of NATO troops would take in Ukraine under uh, France's position is unknown, as Macron's position is not too different than the proposal by former Secretary General Anders Rasmussen, who proposed NATO taking over uncontested parts of the country and building no-fly no zones and air defense within the territory of Ukraine. The debate among policy members did not reject the French proposal and discuss the limited role as Rasmussen proposes or limiting it to the production and training or production and the training of Ukraine troops inside Ukraine all the way to the other spectrum of placing NATO troops in harm's way. The probability of NATO agreeing to the French proposal is highly unlikely, but NATO did not make the decision on the other red lines that were crossed. The decisions were made by NATO members, member states, but not by NATO itself. If NATO countries were to deploy to Ukraine, in whatever their capacity, they would do so not as NATO countries, but individual countries who are NATO members. This means no Article 5 guarantees would be enacted and no unanimous consent from NATO or the EU would be needed. This means that Russian decision logic changes since the unlikely unanimous consent is no longer needed for foreign troop intervention. The European side of the issue is around resolve and capability. Europe is struggling to deploy brigade-sized elements not only beyond their borders but even within the frontiers of NATO unless they have U.S. assistance. Could NATO countries deploy and support troops in Ukraine, even in a non-combat role, within the borders of Ukraine, which will be subjected to some levels of interdiction, even if European and Russian troops avoid direct conflict? The other consideration is that Europe must be serious about the threat and show that they are serious about the threat to create a credible strategic ambiguity. They also must show the resolve to act when the established red lines are crossed to keep that credibility. Europe, again, also must be willing to accept that casualties, even not in the non-combat role, are going to occur and that this will may cause domestic pressure that European partners must be willing to stand firm when it happens. The proposal by French President, if credible, has an increased risk of creating a wider war create the impression that Europe and the West are impotent if they choose not to follow through with the red lines and be willing to accept the cost of potential casualties. On the other hand, it could benefit by helping Ukraine concentrate its limited forces exclusively against the Russians, a luxury that the Russians will not have, and it could create a situation that cost cost of the war of the Russians, both in soldiers and material, would increase. It could incentivize the Russians to seek an exit to the war, or at least draw down operations so as not to provoke Europe. The end of the war could, to the um, the trade-off is that the Russians could be incentivized to end the war, could be a signal to the Ukrainians to become more aggressive on their demands to end the war, which could harden the Russian position, thus prolonging the war. The French, the French proposal does have upside in changing the strategic balance in Ukraine, but also comes at a great risk to Europe and NATO that will be threatening escalation to Russia while Europe and the alliance is politically divided over the issue.